Good morning and welcome from me, Steve Bellamy, to our All Age Worship for Everyone with All Saints Farringdon and St Mary's Little Coxwell this Mothering Sunday. It's great to have you with us for this service in which I'll be joined by Josie Speller, our Children and Families Leader, and also by someone who brings us a not-quite-everyday story of country folk. We start our Mothering Sunday service, however, remembering the plight of thousands of Ukrainian mothers and their children as they're fleeing the war-torn cities of their country. We have the chance to do something really practical to help them this Mothering Sunday. Please go to the Sanctuary Foundation website at sanctuaryfoundation.org.uk, scroll down the page to the Mothering Sunday section, and today there's a special appeal in which Sanctuary Foundation have joined up with Baby Basics, which aims to provide refugee families with the essentials of life, from buggies and cots to toys and shampoo and toothbrushes and pyjamas and so on, by clicking on one or both of two wish lists, one called for common good, and the other is an Amazon wish list, you can actually buy a gift that will go straight to a refugee family. There's lots to choose from, and you and your family could share God's love with a Ukrainian mum and her family by buying a gift that will help them as they settle in the UK and take sanctuary from this awful war. Our first song is led for us by Dave and Helen Wilson. It reminds us of the great love of God for all of us. We sing, Our God is a Great Big God. 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 And He holds us in His hand. Our God is a Great Big God. it's true that while Mothering Sunday is a day of great joy and celebration for some, it is also a day of very mixed emotions for many people, as this short video reminds us. For lots of us, Mother's Day is a really happy day. A day to celebrate our mums and say a big thank you for all they do. For their love, hard work, wisdom and comfort, for walking with us through the highs and the lows, for being there through the tears and big steps and struggles and sorrows and joys and laughter. But for some of us, Mother's Day is a hard day, a sad day. Some of us had mums who didn't look after us well. Some of us are remembering mums who are no longer here and children we have lost. Some of us would love to be mums but can't. Our relationships might be complicated, strained or broken. But we can still be thankful for the many women in our lives who have nurtured, cared for and loved us. Women who have been mothers to us in lots of different ways who spend time with their nephews and nieces, who hang out with teenagers at the youth group, who pray for us each week and encourage us to keep going, who teach us about the best parent, God, who adopts us into his family forever. 
So whether you're a birth mum, a foster carer, an adoptive mum, or longing to be a mum, thank you to all the mothers in our lives, whatever they look like, for all you do and say and are, seen and unseen. Thank you. And now let's pray together. Lord God, you care for us all with an overflowing and gracious love. Please help those for whom Mothering Sunday brings the sadness of loss or disappointment, as well as those who celebrate with joy. And, loving Lord, please enable your family to be a fellowship of support and refuge for everyone, whether they're part of a large family or feeling lonely, or arriving in this country in fear and desperate need. By your Spirit, equip your church to share your peace, support the distressed, feed the hungry, and bring new hope to the glory of Jesus our Lord. Amen. And Josie Speller is now going to lead us in a quiz and then read for us. As it's Mothering Sunday today, we're going to have a quiz and it's called Spot the Mum. So can you guess the mother of these names as they appear? So here's our first one. We've got Anne, Charles, Andrew and Edward. I wonder, do you know who is their mum? Well done if you guessed, it's the Queen, of course. Let's have another one. So we've got Brooklyn, Romeo, Cruz and Harper Seven. Do you know who their mum is? Well done if you guessed, it was Victoria Beckham. Let's have the next one. Psalm, Chicago, Saint and North. Who is the mum to these children? I wonder, did you know? It was Kim Kardashian. Let's have another. We've got Apple and Moses. Just two this time. Who is the mother to Apple and Moses? It is Gwyneth Paltrow. Well done if you've got that one. Here's another. Mia Honey, Bear Blaze and Joe Alfie. Who is their mum? Did you know? It was Kate Winslet. Let's have another one. A lot of names this time. We've got Victoria, Edward, Alice, Alfred, Helena, Louise, Arthur, Leopold and Beatrice. Do you know who their mum is? Well done if you guessed it, it was Queen Victoria. Now we're going to have one more turning to the Bible this time. We've got Jacob and Esau. Who was their mum? It was Rebecca. Well done if you got any of those correct. Names are really special, aren't they? And they mean different things. For example, my name, Josie means God will add. What does your name mean? Perhaps after the service you might like to go away and find out if you don't already know. Names are important and in the Bible names are really important and some of them had special meanings. Let's look at some of those now. Samuel. Did you know that his name means God had heard? Or David. His name means beloved. How about Ruth? Her name means friendship. And then finally, Jesus. Do you know what Jesus' names mean? It means God saves. Jesus was a great saviour. And there are lots of stories in the Bible of people being saved. And we're going to hear a story now about someone being rescued. Our reading today is called The Big Spender and is a story by Bob Hartman, but it's set to images from Free Bible Images. The Big Spender The people who thought they were good were still not happy with Jesus. They moaned, they grumbled, they frowned. It's not fair, they complained. Jesus spends all his time with the bad people. 
Jesus heard this and told them one more story. Once upon a time, there was a man who had two sons. He loved them both very much. But one day, the younger son came to him with a sad request. Father, the younger son said, when you die, I will get part of your money and part of your land. The problem is, I don't want to wait. I want my money now. It was all the father could do to hold back his tears. But because he loved his son, he agreed and gave him his share of the money. That very day, the son left home, money in his pocket and a big smile on his face. He didn't even say goodbye. The father just watched, wiped away a tear, and hoped that one day he would see his son again. The son travelled to a country far, far away, and spent his money just as fast as he could. He drank, he gambled, he used his money to do many bad things, until finally the money was gone. The son looked for a job, but the only work he could find was taking care of pigs. It was hard, dirty work, and he was so hungry sometimes that he thought about taking the pig's food for himself. He was miserable, lonely and sad. And then one day, he had an idea. The servants who take care of my father's animals are much happier than me. I'll go home, that's what I'll do. I'll tell my father how sorry I am for wasting his money. And maybe, just maybe, he'll let me become a servant and work for him. Now what do you think the father had been doing all this time? Did he say to himself, I have my eldest son at home with me. Who cares if my younger son is gone? Of course not. He loved his son, even though he had gone far away. And every day he would go out to the roadside and watch, hoping his son would return. That's exactly where he was when the younger son hobbled home, poor and hungry. The father ran to his son and hugged him tight, and the son dropped right to his knees. Oh, father, he cried, I'm so sorry. I have wasted all your money and I'm no longer good enough to be your son. Don't be silly, said his father. You are my son. You will always be my son. And I'm so glad to have you back. Then the father lifted his son to his feet and walked him home. He dressed him in beautiful clothes. He put gold rings on his fingers and he threw him a big welcome home party. When the elder son came home from work that night, he heard the party noise. What's happening? he asked. And when a servant told him, he was filled with anger and ran to his father. It's not fair, he shouted. I've been a good son. I've worked hard for you all these years. But he was bad. He wasted your money. And now you're throwing him a party? I love you, my son, the father said. And you have enjoyed all the good things I have. But your brother was gone, and now he's back. He was lost, and now he's found. That's why I'm having this party, because we're all back together again. Thank you, Josie. I want to show you three slides and ask what you think the things in all three of these slides have in common. Well, here's the first one. As you can see, there are some clothes and a meal. So uh, hold on to those in your mind. And here's the second slide. Now that's got a, a light bulb and a gas hob that's lit, a running tap and a radiator. And here's the third slide. There's a bus, a car and a train. And if you want to see all three again, what is it that might link all these three things across the three slides? Here's the first one again. And now the second one. And once again, the third slide. So, any ideas what links all these things? 
Well, it's that most of us can take all these things for granted. They're all things we need, and they're things that we're fortunate enough in this country usually to have all of them, so that we're often not particularly grateful for them. We're used to having them around. We don't think twice about having food and clothes and transport to get us where we need to go, and heating and lighting and a cooker and clean water. It's only when these things are taken away that we realise how important they are to us. So if there's a water shortage and we couldn't turn our taps on, we'd really notice then. And when there's a power cut, we realise how much we need electricity when we can't use our lights or anything electrical. If there's a bus or train strike, it can be much harder to get where we need to go. When we're used to things being there, we can take them for granted and forget how important they are and how fortunate we are to have them. But it isn't simply things that we can take for granted. We can also take people for granted, especially the people who love us. Jesus told a story about a young man who took his family for granted. And that was the story that Josie read for us earlier. Well, the young man from that story has gone a bit older. So let's hear from him now about what he remembers about taking for granted when he was younger. I don't know if you've seen our Yorkshire farm on telly. Looks like an idyllic childhood for that big family of kids. Well, it weren't like that for me. For the first 18 years of me life, I lived at home with me dad and older brother, and all them as worked for us. We had this huge, great farm. Lovely, if you like, tractors, sheep ticks and horse muck. It were way out the back of beyond, really remote. Not the end of the world, but you could see it from there. The local night scene were not exactly throbbing with life and colour, more like black and white because it were mainly badgers getting up and walking round. So after a while, I began to get really fed up and bored. It wasn't the glossy magazines that tempted me to leave for a better life, because I didn't see any. Our only Sunday supplement, the cod liver oil. Somehow I felt the place were too small for me. Not that I were too old for it, more like I were too young to stay here and get old in the same old, same old of milking and shearing and edging and ploughing and planting and haymaking and harvesting and then doing it all again next year. One day, when the peak of excitement had been me brother beating me in a rabbit counting competition in top field, I snapped like a rotten twig and decided that was it. I wanted me freedom to go and discover new places, find me true self and enjoy the big wide world. So I strode up to me dad and I says, Dad, I'm off. I'm off to spread me wings and have a good time while I can. But to do that... I'll need plenty of readies. So, Dad, I want you to give me my share of the estate ASAP in folding money. Now, that weren't the way you were supposed to come into your inheritance. Normally, you didn't get your dad's money until after he died. But I didn't want to wait. He was fit as a fiddle, and I wanted to enjoy his money now, or I might never get the chance. Amazingly, me dad didn't kick up a fuss. Never argued or got mad. Didn't send me out to stack some hay bales. But with a distressed look on his face, a bit like he'd sipped some sheep dip, he set about dividing his property between me and me brother and then selling off my share so in a few days he'd got a huge wadge of cash to hand over to me. No sooner than it were mine... Then I packed up, left home and went off to sample some foreign culture and find some new friends that only had two legs. 
At first, it were absolutely amazing. Money opened more doors than any keys ever did. I had a fantastic time living the eye life on my dad's money. Penthouse parties, drinks, girls, more parties, fun, 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 sand, sea, sun, and fill in the gaps. Yeah, sangria. I was free to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. No need to fit in with family or be held back by them. If I wanted champagne on me cornflakes at breakfast at noon and caviar and chips every night and juicy strawberries with cream and we crushed up meringue, I only got to click me fingers and it were done. But then, just like I'd run out on me father and me family, me money did the same thing on me. It ran out rapidly. So the fizz went out of life. No more eaten mess. Just a mess. And soon, not much eaten either, because to make things worse, the crops failed, a rubbish harvest meant I had no food to eat, and my new best mates were no longer picking up or returning me calls. None of them stayed in touch to offer me a loan. I was just that. Alone. I managed to get a job, but it were definitely unskilled, and as jobs go, it were the lowest of the low, feeding pigs, really scraping the barrel. Actually, I'll admit, I was so hungry that I looked at the mushy sludge I was feeding the pigs, and I wanted to scrape the pig food barrel and share their menu. But there was too much foreign culture mouldering away at the bottom. As I was feeding the pigs one day, my mind went back to my dad. He was such a kind and loving dad, and so generous. I knew that the people he hired to work for him were fed really well, three square meals a day and plenty to spare. And then I knew. Penny dropped. I realised just how badly I wanted to go back home again, but how? How could I go home as a son after treating me dad so badly? I reckoned I'd have to ask him to take me on as a hired hand, zero hours contract, whatever. After, that is, I'd said what a mess I'd made of things and I was so sorry for the way that I'd treated him so wrong. So I did back home. And as I came over at Browerville, I could see someone in distance stood at gate right on edge of our land, scanning the horizon with his hand up to the sun. He jumped up and down and started waving when he spotted me and he launched himself up the track, legs pumping like he'd have shot past Usain Bolt. He'd not moved so fast since Bull got him in its sights in Cowfield. He thudded into me as we both nearly went base over apex as he threw his arms around me and kissed me and I stuttered into me prepared speech as the tears ran down his face and mine. Dad! Dad! I've sinned against heaven and against you, me dad! I'm no longer worthy to be called your son! But he took no notice, like he didn't hear a word. He called his servants, got them to run me out bath, gave me the finest robe to wear, put a ring on me finger and comfy shoes on me battered feet. They killed the fattened calf so there'd be a feast in my honour. And me dad stood up at it and said, this son of mine were dead and is alive again. He was lost and he's now found. You know, we all need to find our way home and be found by our waiting father. The son who came to his senses and came home to his waiting dad and discovered that his dad wasn't going to make him a servant but wanted him back as a son, forgiven and much loved. It's all too easy for us to take things for granted we mentioned food and clothes and clean water and heating and a cooker and electricity, but 
Sometimes, as we said, we can take people for granted and forget to thank them for all they do for us. Especially we might forget to thank mums and dads or our family who care for us. And our mums and dads or family are people who reflect something of the sort of gracious, ongoing love for us that God always has, who keeps on loving us strongly and faithfully, even when we act like that runaway son and try to live without him. We shouldn't take God our Heavenly Father for granted any more than we should our family or friends who look after us and care for us. So today is a good day to thank those who look out for us, and it's also a good day if we've been wandering a bit from God to come back home to him, as we remember that like the waiting father, God longs to welcome us back, always with open arms. And Josie Speller now leads us in our prayers, at the end of which we can join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Lord our God, as the prodigal returned to his father's house, so you call us to return to you. Help us to hear your call afresh and to respond by giving you our hearts and lives to the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. As we've heard today about not taking things for granted, let's spend a moment in silence and in our imagination hold in the palm of our hands those people we care especially about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for our families and for the families of the church, nations and the world. As we turn to the God of compassion and healing, we pray for those who are unwell at the moment. And again, in a moment of silence and in our imagination, hold in the palm of our hands those we care about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We lift to you our church, Lord God, our ministers who lead us in your ways, our volunteers who seek to make sure we do everything we can to be welcoming and helpful, those who support us and are encouraged by us, and by our building that serves as a witness to your presence among us. Pour your spirit of unity and peace on us. Help us discern your guidance and show us new ways of bringing your love and healing to our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We lift to you, Lord, our nation, the politicians who represent us, those who maintain justice, those who provide us with many services, and all who work to keep us supplied with the good things we have. Help us to express proper care and concern for everyone, that people of all sorts and conditions may have their fair share of the good things you give us. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine. And in one more moment of silence, and in our imagination, hold in the palm of our hands all those caught in the war. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And finally, Lord God, we thank you for our mothers, those who brought us to birth, nurtured us in our infancy, taught us in our childhood, gave us a base from which to explore your world, and so showed us something of your love. We pray for those who have difficult relationships with their mothers, and those who've lost their mothers. Comfort children of all ages who are particularly sad today on Mothering Sunday. Help us to appreciate our mothers properly, find ways of being a practical help to them, and reflect back to them something of the great love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us finish our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our last hymn is a version of Mary's song who praised God as she knew she would be the mother of Jesus, the one coming to rescue us and bring us back to God. We sing, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. hope you've enjoyed worshipping with us and will be able to join us again next Sunday but now we're going to close with a prayer of blessing and let's include in this blessing all those that we wish to pray for today. Let's pray. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love, broad and long, deep and high, beyond our knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And so let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>